Nein, 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 nein. Oh Gott. Wieso? Hello guys and welcome to my next video. This video, as you already know, is about all the cars in PGR free. And in this segment, I would like to show you all the cars of the game without the DLCs, no DLCs included. Um, in the garages, I'm not sure if the fourth part of the of this game series has garages like this here as well. I know that the second uh, game in the series and the first one have different types of selection screens that I think the garages in this game are, well, the best way to select the car if you want so. They are pretty special, like a really cool and unique idea. Anyway, without talking too much, let's get into the first garage, which is called Tokyo 2, or Tokyo 2, German. And, well, let's step in. So the first car here is the aerial atom right yeah 300 supercharged now the slowest car top speed wise in the game but of course extremely impressive in the corners and well it's super lightweight obviously as you can see so why did they choose this location for these cars because this location while it's quite beautiful and actually every single location garage location in this game is very well done I chose this one um, because, it, well, it can fit 10 cars as all garages except one. And I placed the 10, le my 10 least favorite cars in this garage. So the next one is the Palma Sport JP1. A very track based car, just like their Aerial Atom. Probably not street legal. I'm not sure though, but I would guess it's not. Basically, it's a race car, just like the Radical SR3 Turbo. They are of the same class, obviously, they look very similar to each other all three have pretty pretty surely the the least high or the slowest top speed in the game although it's still like it begins with the aerial atom at roughly 275 kmh and i believe it was one of the taglines for the marketing of this game like life starts at 275 kmh or something something like that but yeah, these 10 cars, they are my 10 least favorite cars because, um, mostly because of the design. I didn't like them a lot, to be honest. This is the Panos Esperanto GTL GTLM, the street car, which might be the ugliest car in the game and one of the ugliest cars I have ever seen, to me, like in my opinion. Although I have seen more ugly. I have seen uglier cars, especially in the Soviet Union. I'm one is the Panos GTR 1 Coupe, um, the race car version of the R1. I believe they are more or less the same car, right? Yeah, should be. And let's go to the next one, which is the Ford Supercar Concept. I believe it is also called the Ford Indigo, which uh, was also featured in Need for Speed 2 back then in 1996. It should be. Then we have the Noble M400. Well, it looks okay, but again, very track focused car. A great car, though. Absolutely quick, super through the corners. Yeah, and was also featured in the PGR2, in the predecessor of this game. And then we have the Ultima GTR, which looks okay, but again, track focused car, very quick, especially through the corners. It's a good car. I like it though, although its design is, well, 
not the best. And then we have the Shelby Cobra concept, which I mean, it looks it looks passable. I think it looks okay. You, let's remember this game is from 2005, so yeah, the concepts back then looked well more or less like this. So this was in back then, it seems. And this is the Elfin MS8. Don't ask me about this auto manufacturer. I don't know anything about it. Um, and yeah, this might, after all, be the ugliest car, least attractive car in the game, together with the Panos. And uh, doesn't help that Panos in Russian means diarrhea. <laughs> it's kind of fitting, I guess. I don't know, but yeah, to me that, that was funny that this car that doesn't look all that great has such an unflattering name as well, at least in Russian. Okay, so that's for, for this garage, these 10 cars, the garage itself, the location is pretty well done, I like the water shading, not bad, at the next one, at the next garage, which is called well, newly built shed or something like that, something to that degree in English. And let's start with the two, if I would finally move, um, with the two Callaways, Callaway C7 race version of this car you see there. If I'm not mistaken, I recall differently C12 and C7, but to me, well, they are almost, almost the same. It's basically the street version, it's the race version. And Cal Callaway C12, which I have driven the first time in GT4. And to be quite honest, I mean, it does look okay. And its performance is actually pretty good on Shrek. You know, even in the corners, I, um, yeah, I like it. It's, again, not really my favorite design, but it's, um, uh, etc. But still pretty good. Then we have the Nissan GTR Concept which um, was featured in that variation also in Gran Turismo Tokyo Concept Geneva, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, was one of the first revealed concepts of what would become, I, I'll blend it in here, the Nissan, oh, there's a camera moving, nice, I didn't know. Um, the Nissan GTR 2007, which, well, today everyone knows as the R35 Godzilla, the legend, the super legendary car. Um, what should what should be the name? Standing by its own, poor Wiesmann GT. Looks, I get its appeal, but it's absolutely not my my well my type of design. I like just absolutely not what I like. It looks like you know like a like a car people would imagine imagine in the twenties to look like in our time. It's like a modern interpretation of 20s or 30s car like from 100 years ago, roughly. But yeah, other than that, it's an impressive car. It's, it's a good car on track. Absolutely. So what's the next one? Cadillac 16. I don't even know if this is a real car, to be quite honest. Because it is insanely long. It's huge. It's so big. And it's incredibly quick. Like its acceleration is is super car quick, hyper car quick. But its dimensions are like a true limousine, you know. It's gigantic and probably it weighs I don't know two and a half or almost three tons or something like that. So yeah, weird car. And we got this supercar prototype, Yos. Again, don't know if it's real, Yos, is this uh, a, a guy from Formula, Formula One? I'm, I'm not sure, but it looks a little generic. It looks like it could be just a design of the game developers, like supercar prototype, you know, but, you know, it doesn't look too bad. It looks like a generic supercar and has, well, pretty impressive stats. It's pretty impressive on the track. Not a bad car by any means. Then we have the two Ford concepts. First, the Ford Shelby GR1 concept, which, in my opinion, 
it doesn't look really good. I mean, especially like, you know, from this. Again, this is like some Shelby Cobra Daytona modern interpretation. The shapes worked back then, today, not so much. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look catastrophic or anything. It is, as far as I can tell, pretty good on track. So yeah, good car still. Then the legendary Ford concept, the GT90 concept. First time ever featured, I believe, as well in Need for Speed 2 in 1996. Driven it there as well. And later in Gran Turismo 2, actually. The, f the one and only Gran Turismo where it was ever featured, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, but it's an impressive car. Pretty cool car. And then we have the two Corvettes, the ZR1 from, what should that be, 94, 96? Well, in the middle, from the middle of, of the 90s. Great car, quick, drives well, I think. I like the design. It looks almost 80s, to be honest. Very 80s. But, uh, yeah, still a good-looking car. And then we have the Sledgehammer Twin Turbo, which is basically that car, but by Callaway, like, completely tuned, souped up, it's insanely quick, it's actually, well, I will spoil it, the fastest car in the game, top speed wise, uh, which I will show in my next video, but I'm not gonna reveal just yet how much I actually achieved in the car. I like the HDR lighting here, pretty well done for an old game. This location itself might be the least spectacular from all the garage locations, but it's still quite nice. And they always added in some water, you know, because, yeah, the water shading looks pretty good. Even some reflections of the houses and stuff. Not bad. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So the next one I would like to show you, I will, I think I will just go from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Let's take the next one in German, Wüstenlöcher, in English, uh, that would be translated something like desert holes. Why ever they, like, oh, they called it that way, I don't know. And, well, let's take a look. The first one, pretty legendary car right away, 4GT40 M MK1, street car. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the streetcar version. Great car. I mean, for the time it came out, when was when was that 66? I believe it was unbelievable, unbelievable. Ford has beaten Ferrari, I believe, three years in a row in Le Mans with this car. So, yeah, it's, it's a legend. And then this was the first modern revival of this car in 2002 it, it probably pretty surely was 2002 2003 something like that the 4gt new edition well not the newest there are again newer ones obviously not in this game the game is from 2005 but yeah very very good car cousin Yamauchi, the main producer the inventor the father of the gran turismo series on playstation has uh, had this uh, this car or he still has it i don't know i'm not not quite sure but i know he did possess it for 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 uh, for a for a time for a few years next one is the volkswagen w12 nado coupe this was as far as i remember also a concept a working concept actually if, if, I, if i'm not mistaken and yeah, it's very fast. It's a true supercar, a real supercar. And now I have driven it the first time in Gran Turismo Concept Tokyo Geneva on the PlayStation 2 in 2002. Um, yeah, and it definitely um, uh, did not leave my, my memory. Like it impressed me a lot. And I've seen it in real life once in Germany, in um, Wolfsburg, the city Wolfsburg, in Niedersachsen, Lower Saxony, the state of Lower Saxony, um, where where it stood in this museum in the VW Volkswagen Autostadt in Wolfsburg, 
and yeah there there it was in real life in this color and looks very very impressive in real life as well very white car from behind almost as white as a lamborghini diablo maybe just as white not sure like roughly two meters probably yeah very good car i like it so next car finally koenigsegg ccr well the koenigseggs they came out of no or nowhere in the middle of the 2000s from sweden and just took the supercar and hypercar scene by storm and this is the quicker model right of the two yeah this here is the quicker one came out in i don't know 2004 i believe has a, an official top speed of um, over 380 90 something like that so yeah a super impressive car it's pretty good to drive i like it a lot definitely and this was as far as i remember its direct predecessor the cc8s and this one was in pgr2 as well also an extremely impressive very quick car top speed of over 360 or over 370 or even more so yeah the koenigsegg brothers on this side okay, let's take a look at the other cars before we take a look a wider look on the location this is the roof supercar concept and i believe that this was the concept for a car they actually built later which should become the roof ctr3 if i'm not mistaken i'll blend it in here and the, this car is also featured in gt sport i mean it's not the best car in the in the corners but still quite well quite good but well of course extremely quick in the straight line and uh, does the north life lap time in gt sport at least with the sports hard tires of 7 15 7 minute 15 seconds so very close to hypercar range of um i don't know of the pagani huayras ferrari la ferraris um, mclaren p1s porsche 918 etc etc roughly 15 seconds away from them okay you could say it's not really close but certainly not too far away so the next one is the roof ctr2 what a great car top speed of over 340 kmh very very quick good acceleration quite good handling I've driven this car the first time in Gran Turismo 2 and then in Gran Turismo 3, Gran Turismo 4 and I guess in some other games. Yeah, it's a great car, good looking, good driving, very very performant, very impressive. And the next one are the two Roof Brothers. So this is a Roof RGT, slightly uh, slower bro brother of the Roof R Turbo over there. And, well, I mean, it's a tuned Porsche. What is there to say? It's a phenomenal car. Super impressive on the track, in a straight line, top speed, everything. everything. Just amazing, an amazing machine. Well, all, all, this, uh, all of the said applies, um, uh, of the aforementioned applies to this car as well, just more because it is just quite a bit quicker and is one of the quickest cars in the entire game acceleration and top speed wise and it's just very impressive for its class and especially challenges like the drift challenges it's rear wheel drive obviously as this one as well although the ctr2 is not it is a four wheel drive and the last car the legend i have not shown you yet but you have already seen is the roof ctr yellow bird you, almost all of you will know the video on the Nordschleife with the German, one of those German race car drivers, I forgot the name of, where he was basically drifting and sliding the entire 20 kilometers around the Nordschleife with this car, the video from, well, it should be the 90s, I guess, of the end of the 90s, very impressive especially for its time an extremely impressive car with an alleged top speed of 346 kmh i believe which is just insane complete insanity for for the time back then it was what roughly huh, roughly what a wordplay huh? roof rough roughly okay i'll stop um uh, roughly 20 kilometers quicker than uh, and then 
a Ferrari F40 or a 50 or a Lamborghini Diablo. So, yeah, super impressive. And that should be it for this garage and this location, which is, in my opinion, pretty spectacular with the lighting. Let's take a look from from here on the cars. Uh, landscape. I mean, sure, it looks crappy today. But again, this is a launch game of the 360. It had 512, not even 512 usable memory for the games. So, like, roughly half a gigabyte, um, a terabyte of roughly half a gigabyte, sorry, of course, of, uh, of video memory, so yeah, you shouldn't expect the world's best when it comes to this, but yeah, good, good location. So, what would be the next garage? Vorstadt von New York. Um, I guess that's something like a suburb of New York, like those cities built next to New York where all the rich white people live. The people who are well off and the first car or two cars are the two Viper S RT10 models one of my favorite cars of all time probably what well, maybe not this very model but the very first one the very first Vi Viper um, from 90 or the second Viper the very first one was the Cabriolet I'm talking about the coupe from 96 I guess it was but yeah, the, SR, the SR10, SRT10 is still a very impressive car, good looking, and this is basically the, the improved version, the SRT10 Carbon, which should be one class higher in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, what, are, what should be the next cars we take a look at? Yeah, I guess those two. This is the second noble of the game, only two nobles. In the game, the M14 in grey, English car, British car. It looks looks okay, you know, doesn't look too bad. Drives pretty well. It's an impressive sports car slash supercar. Almost supercar stats. And next to it is the Farbound GTS. Whatever that is supposed to be. I don't even know if that is real. I did not Google, did not research. Um, but um, honestly, again, it looks a little generic, like this supercar prototype I have shown you in the, in the other garage. Um, but more fleshed out like a real car. It doesn't look too bad. It reminds me a little bit of the modern McLarens, you know, the 650S, etc. So, yeah, good car. Um, very potent on the track as well. What do we have here? Oh, actually nothing. Yeah, this garage was left empty. So the next five cars, it's all about the Mustang, you know, that's five Mustangs, all five Mustangs of the game. Let's maybe start on the inside. And this is the Shelby GT500 Mustang, 1980, if I'm not mistaken. Very fast. Good looking, I think. I always like the Mustang and basically all variations of it. The SVT Cobra, Mustang Cobra R, pretty cool looking car not the best performance wise honestly neither um, when it comes to speed nor to cornering but yeah still pretty good pretty cool car i have driven it the first time in gran turismo 3 on the ps2 where it did disappoint me a little bit i mean again it's not the not the best car but yeah still pretty nice here is a mustang gtr concept by whom by Ford themselves, I don't know, probably, by the game developers, I don't know. In the game, at least, it's extremely impressive, and the corners is pretty good looking, I think. The next one is the Celine Mustang, Celine S281E. And, well, it looks pretty nifty, you know, it looks pretty damn good. If I'm honest, I like it a lot. This contrast of the very light wheels and the darker purple color pretty cool and as the last one the standard if you want so the normal if you want so shelby ford shelby cobra gt500 you know just this is just the shelby 
GT500, this is the Ford Shelby GT500. I'm I'm confused by the naming of these cars, maybe you can enlighten me, but yeah, it's in my opinion probably the best looking model of all of these. And wait a second, is this not the exact same model, color and everything that has been have been used in um, the movie I Am Legend w with Will Smith? It was r around 2005 as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, yeah, pretty cool car. Probably my favorite of those five Mustangs. And this should be it for this location, right? Yes, it is. Pretty nice looking. And actually quite fitting that it's all American cars. If, oh, except those two. And if you consider we are in a suburb of New York. Oh, that was wrong other garage now this will be the last one i show you and you will see why and this will be the second to last this will be the third to last so the next one would be a land house which is translated something like a house on the land you know a house in the step you know what i mean like a farmhouse or something okay let's take a look here so the first two cars, the legendary street versions of the Nissan R390 GT1, what a car, have driven it the first time in test drive 4, it should be, on the PlayStation 1, and then later in Gran Turismo 2, Gran Turismo 4 later, etc. So yeah amazing car you know basically a race car for the road and the same applies to this car which is the street version car of the toyota gt1 in my opinion one of the best looking race cars of all time like it <laughs> look at this look at the shape the color you know this black red like the devil himself designed this thing you know it comes from hell <laughs> but in a in a positive way it looks amazing and well the performance stats are, are insane as well what an impressive car so cool i like it a lot what should be the next cars we're taking a look at yeah let's uh, take a look at the next japanese street legal race car probably i don't know if, if, if this has ever been street legal I, I don't know honestly but it looks like it in the same vein to be in the same vein as the other two Honda NSX GT2, well, Honda NSX, I mean, absolute super legend, one of the most legendary sports cars ever created with one of the very best models ever, the NSX Type R 2004, one of my absolute favorite cars of all time. And mainly designed back then in the 80s with the help of Ayrton Senna and, you know, if this this doesn't say something then i don't know what does so the next one is the lotus gt1 is this the street car version of the race car i guess i'm pretty sure i've driven it the first time in gran turismo 2 on the ps1 back then yeah it was pretty impressive pretty cool like it's an racy at least not racy it's uh, it's an extreme race car it's extremely quick in acceleration all the aero parts make a lot of downforce of course etc etc so it's yeah it's a pretty cool car and the next ones we should take a look at are the tvrs the all three of them these are the only tvrs from the game first the sagaris which i've seen in an episode of top gear pretty surely yeah it's a good car i think it looks pretty cool it is very impressive performance wise as all TVRs are because I think all of them punch way above their weight um, I don't know why they had so little success commercial success you know um, I don't even know if they build cars anymore uh, I believe they don't which is a real shame if they don't because their cars were always so over the top so extreme even design wise you know here this typhoon this Typhoon is basically basically on the level of a true supercar, almost on the on the bridge um, or bridge, whatever, um, to hypercars. 
this is basically as quick as a Ferrari Enzo, almost as quick, which is crazy. And yeah, it's pretty good in the game as well. And then in the background, of course, you have the TVR Cerberus P12, which was featured in PGR2 as well, and in Gran Turismo 2 for the first time. This is where I have driven it, although it had this funky spoiler there, like a real big spoiler. And well, I mean, what is there to say? This is just an extreme car all around. Extremely light as well, if I'm not mistaken, like 980 kilos or just a ton. And for the size, you know, for this power it has, it's almost nothing. It's just crazy. Now, what can we see here? Yeah, this is some something looks looks English, you know. So that's fitting again here with those cars, at least. And the, the last ones, the last three ones are the McLaren ah, Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR Supersport streetcar version. And man, do I love this car. It looks so cool. It's so incredibly quick in everything. Acceleration, top speed, cornering. Amazing. I hope one day it will finally come to a Gran Turismo, to the new Gran Turismo. At least we will get... Finally, the Porsche Carrera GT and the 911 Street version, Straßenversion, and GT7, which I'm very much looking forward to. But yeah, anyway, the next one is the Aston Martin DBR9. Uh, I don't even know if this is street legal, man. I mean, it doesn't look very street legal to me. Probably a track car. Looks pretty, pretty cool. Like the race slash half street car version of the normal DB9. Um, yeah, a very cool car, very impressive as well. And the the best for last, you know, the McLaren F1 LM, the legend. My favorite F1 is still the original normal F1 with, with the top speed of 386 kmh, which has not been featured in any Project Gotham Racing, unfortunately, but in GT5, 6 and Sport it has been. And will certainly be in Gran Turismo 7. Um, but still, yeah, the LM version is like a racy version of that, you know. Slightly quicker acceleration, slightly less top speed. More downforce, better through the corners. Yeah, amazing car. Pretty impressive. So those are those are all cars I like, pretty much. Ah, yeah, of course, they uh, edited it in some some water here as well hey wait can we go in the garden let's take a look <laughs> no we can't okay anyway so next garage would be would be would be would be oh. yeah let's take this one the z ufa mm, which is the c I don't know the word for it. You will see. Basically like a harbor. Here's the harbor. So my idea was I don't know, which cars would I... Which 10 cars would I place in a location like this if I had it, you know, in, for real. With a little harbor next to me. A little boat. And, you know, some nice autumn -y scenery. What should be the first cars we take a look at? Yeah, those two, definitely. The two GTs, you know, the very heavy, slow accelerating English cars, especially the Continental, Bentley Continental GT, has an insane top speed of 331 kilometers per hour, although, you know, which is very impressive for such a heavy car. Um, and in my opinion is still the best looking Bentley because yeah Bentleys are not my cup of tea when it comes to design you know the looks of a car but yeah this model I think it looks it looks fine and has been featured in PGR2 as well good car though all wheel drive if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken the next one is the real wheel drive Jaguar XKR I have pretty much uh, a big nostalgia for this car because I've driven it back then as a Lee Will boy of 12 years old on the um, a Need for Speed 4 on the PlayStation 1. So we every car was just super cool back then. You know, we didn't have exposure exposure to internet. So um, we've seen the cars only in the, in the games. And yeah, 
I liked it a lot. I still like it a lot. The design as well. It's a good GT Cruiser. Still very sporty. Well, at least certainly sportier than the Bentley Continental. Um, yeah, good car. So, the next ones. Yeah, let's take a look at the Nissan Skyline GTR V Spec 2 Nür for Nürburgring Nordschleife. Yeah, the legend, the most legendary Godzilla, the R34 from, well, this very version from 2002. One of my favorite cars of all time. I have um, a lap time, hot lap uploaded of this one on the Nordschleife uh, um, from GT Sport on my channel. If you want to check it out, you can you can do so. The next one would be the Spyker CA-12S, which I've driven the first time in Gran Turismo 4. And if I remember correctly, this was a Danish from Denmark or a um, from the Netherlands, a car maker. I'm not sure now, but it did impress me quite a lot. Like, like it was pretty quick. It looks pretty cool. It has a very cool looking interior. You can really see it in this game, though. Um, but yeah, a pretty special and cool car. The next two, this is also more of a GT car than a true sports car in my opinion, it's just too heavy, too slow in acceleration, um, not very nimble, but um, yeah, um, simple styling, you know, some form of understatement here, but non nonetheless a very good looking car and still pretty quick, almost 300 kmh top speed if I'm not mistaken, and just a fun car, good car, absolutely great car. Now we have the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren, you know, what do you get when you when you mix the DNA of a McLaren and a, Mer a Mercedes-Benz, this is what you get. It's a pretty cool looking car, it's very fast, it's very impressive all around, like, yeah, it's a very good car and it looks pretty cool if you open the doors from, you know, this view, they are mm, basically like on the McLaren F1, less so um, compared with the Lamborghinis, they just open more straightly and those like, you know, like to the side and up, you know what I mean. And the same applies to Mercedes um, Benz Seal KGTR. It has the same door functionality, basically, yeah. Anyway, what are the remaining cars? Those four, yeah, they are my four favorites of this garage for sure. The Pagani Zonda C12 S7.3. I've driven this one the first time in GT4, released in 2004. The game, the car released in, I believe, as well, 2004. This was back then the fastest Pagani Zonda, and well, it is supremely impressive. Pagani came to for me also out of nowhere in the beginning of the 2000s, and just straight away rivaled. You know, all the big players, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, Porsche, Chevrolet, like the Corvettes, the Vipers, everything. And yeah, it is insanely impressive. It's super, a true supercar. It looks very unique, looks very cool. Definitely one of my favorite supercars. Although I do not like the centralized four exhausts. It looks, I mean, it does kind of fit with the, with the rest of the design, but... I'm not the biggest fan of this configuration when it comes to exhausts. Then the next one, Selena 7, to me also came out of nowhere. I have only truly um, got to know Selene with Gran Turismo 4. This is the first time where I have seen this car and driven it and I was just so impressed right away. A true, real supercar with the likes of the Murcielagos and F50s and Enzos. Like... Wow, it looks very, very cool as well. Then we have the M Maserati MC12. One of my f absolute favorite supercars ever of all time. It looks very unique, very special. Just, yeah, just look at it. I mean, wow. Um, yeah, I was also very surprised by this one when they launched it back then in 2003 maybe 2000 between 2004 and two, uh, yeah 2004 and 2002 um, 
yeah, I mean, it just looks amazing. It sounds incredible. It has incredible driving stats, and some of you will know the story, but back then when um, Ferrari developed the Enzo Maserati was developing this one in tandem to it, and they um, were supposed to share the same engine. And actually, in this car, it is the same engine um, as uh, as the one in the Enzo. It has the Enzo's engine, but it is detuned a little bit, mandated by Ferrari, because it, or around the track, it was quicker than the Enzo. So Maserati followed all the instructions of and mandates of Ferrari, did detune the engine, or it got detuned uh, de engines from Ferrari, I really don't know the details, don't ask me. Um, I just know it, it did have a detuned engine from, from the Enzo and it was still, I don't know, one or two <laughs> seconds quicker around the Nordschleife than the Enzo. I just um, th I, I think it is one of the funniest and well, just one of the coolest stories from the automotive industry. You know, Ferrari with, with all their pride, you know, ah, impossible, you can't be quicker than us. And then they get a detuned engine and they're still quick around the Norch life. And yeah, pretty big win for Maserati, I think. Anyway, the Jack XJ220, the legend, you know, really a legendary supercar, this true supercar status from the 90s, like the typical 90s supercar. I have driven it the first time in Need for Speed 2 as well on the PS1 um, in 96, and then later in Gran Turismo 2. And yeah, it always impressed me with its design and test drive as well, with its design, with its um, specs. Although it has always been a little bit slower top speed wise in all these games um, than it has been proclaimed to be um, in real life from Jaguar. I don't know if it ever has really reached over 350 kmh, but it's still very, very quick in acceleration and top speed, good handling, very unique handling sort of um yeah great car so what should be the next one um only free left yeah let's do the start garage the first garage you have this is the only garage in the game that does not have 10 um well 10 parking lots as the other garages all have 10 uh, this is the only one that has which has less and it has exactly four so because of the lighting conditions in this garage i mean look at this it's in 2005 this looked so incredibly impressive i was back then like i couldn't believe what i was seeing you know it just looked super real to us today well it still looks pretty good i think um yeah it's not too bad and yeah because it has so little um so little showroom and the special lighting conditions i thought i would I would fit in one of my favorite, four of my favorite cars from the game and in general. The Maserati Grand Sport, to me this is like one of those more or less perfect sports cars, almost supercars. I mean, no, it's not a real supercar, but a very quick sports car. It has what, roughly 320 HP, a rear wheel drive, so this is like a great car for sports cars, beginners, you know. Uh, who are not this advanced it looks amazing i think it sounds amazing and yeah it's not too quick certainly and definitely not too slow especially considering it has only 320 hp um yeah still one of my very f favorite cars we had the this plate in the alfa romeo um, car dealer here around the corner where i live in germany in hanover as a cabriolet of course used um, for like something like 12,000 euros i was <laughs> actually a little bit think actually really thinking a little bit about buying it but yeah i mean let's be honest i'm not that well off that i could actually actually really really possess such a car for a longer time but yeah it did tempt me so the next one is the lotus esprit again one of my very one of my favorite absolute favorite sports cars it's very similar in performance to the maserati very very similar great design i think well what year is this model from 99 2002 2003 something like that 2002 roughly yeah and it, to me it looks it sounds kind of 
mean, but it looks like a poor man's Lamborghini. Which isn't a bad thing, because I think Lamborghinis are the best or the coolest cars in the world. My favorite car maker. And this one, well, just looks like a, a little slower. I don't know, Diablo or something, you know, like a little Diablo. With the pop-up headlights and, yeah, and then this yellow color. Just a pretty, pretty cool car. I like it a lot. Then the next one, the two American Legends, you know, the Corvette C6. The direct competitor to the to the Viper GTS right in front of it. The C6 was and it still is of exceptional value. It it um, provides exceptional performance for uh, the buying price. Um, it's just well an extremely well designed car. You know, one of the best sports cars actually ever made in my opinion. Absolutely, Corvettes in general surprised me quite often uh, at how good they actually was you know I always always thought typical like far too heavy far too slow actual actually slow American supercar or sports car but no absolutely not they are legitimately very good sports cars I like it a lot and the Viper GTS my favorite Viper of model of all time this should be the 2002 model has been featured in PGR2 as well just as the Lotus Esprit and well yeah i don't know it has something about it you know the design is just so cool it's almost outrageous it's just very unique it has very very good handling in my opinion it has always surprised me in every single game i have played it's not too expensive if i remember correctly not much more than the Corvette, certainly much less than, you know, the likes of especially Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini and even Porsche, but has very, very comparable driving stats, being not too really actually better than comparable Lamborghini or Ferrari or Porsche models, so uh, yeah, one of, one of the best sports cars ever made, I think. Let's take a look at the next garage. So only two left, uh, yeah, of course, then it's the next one should be Kusta, which is coast in English. And this is where I placed my Lamborghinis. I know I should have actually shown them um, as the last ones, as they are my favorite car manufacturer, but there are only seven Lamborghinis in the game and ten Ferraris, so you will you know what the next garage will be. Um, yeah, let's let's start with this one. Is the sun again up? Yeah, interestingly, is it up? Yes, the sun's position does change a little bit in the game. I mean, I hope I, ha I haven't been imagining things, but this is how I, how I've seen it. It can be quite dim, and like I don't know if you turn the game on the next day, it is much lighter, and the cars are lit differently. But maybe I was imagining things. I don't know. So, my least favorite of the Lamborghinis is the Miura P400 SV. The, um, allegedly, the first supercar ever made, ever, officially. And I guess I would agree, it was over 290 or at least over 280 kilometers fast, top speed-wise, which is unbelievably fast for back then in the 60s, and in, in, in the end of the, of the 60s. This is the Miura SV. And well, bef considering its age, it's a good-looking car and is especially impressive performance-wise. And the next one right next to it is the Lamborghini Countach 25th Anniversary, which is one of my favorite Countach models, possibly my favorite. And this should be the 88 model, 1988, which is my birth year as well, so I do have that connection to that car. And yeah, it is the typical and 80s or just general 80s um, wall poster you know um, 12 year olds um, bedroom poster car next to the Ferrari Testarossa of course and well from 1988 also next to the Ferrari 40 which has also released in 88 and yeah very cool looking car super super impressive looking and quite impressive on the track it wasn't that bad not as bad as its reputation might might imply. It has been featured in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, where he uh, basically drives like an idiot completely on drugs, which was a very cool scene. 
So the next ones, let's do this one first. The Murcielago RGT. Amazing car. Pretty cool carbon fiber shader here in the game. Super cool looking, like super mean looking, you know, very aggressive. Um, and just super impressive on the track, but yeah, it's a, again a track focused car and I'm more a fan of smoother lines and purely street legal cars. And it's smaller brother, it's completely street legal version is the very first standard Murcielago 6.2, 330 kilometers per hour top speed back then very impressive and it released in 2001 it should be and is very impressive here in the game as well i i was very impressed and surprised by its acceleration top end acceleration from 250 kilometers and up um until the very top speed which is which it reaches quite easily i don't know how they set up the gearing but yeah it was super impressive and actually very realistic because i have seen videos where people would drive this car and it's um models you know that came later the modified murcielagos on the german autobahn and it was very apparent that especially these models they have a very impressive top end like much more impressive than many older sports cars like the f40 f50 xj220 etc um, just incredibly impressive at the top end. Then we have its baby brother from 2004, the Gallardo, the first affordable Lamborghini. I believe it did launch with a price of 120,000 euros, which would be back then roughly $150,000, considering it's a Lamborghini at a new car, new, car, new car's price. Really not that expensive. Had all wheel drive. 500 HP was the direct competitor to the Ferrari F430. They were basically equal on the track, you know, um, track times wise. And yeah, very good car and super, super amazing sounding. One of the best sounding cars ever, ever made with the Lexus LFA, Ferrari F430, Ferrari F50, Ferrari F40, and Porsche Carrera GT. So yeah, I. I mm, I'm holding its sound quality in very high regard. And the last two models, right? Yep. These are the Diablo models. The Diablo models are my very favorite cars ever. The very first Diablo from 1990 with the spoiler, with the rear wheel drive, and in the purple, dark purple color, or this uh, lighter color, which is a mix of, well, it's basically beige. It does this word exist in English? I hope. Like a light, a light brown, white brown tone. I, I guess you know what I mean. Like marble, maybe. Comparable, yeah. And the, these two colors, my absolute favorite car of all time. And has never been featured in any single game, if I'm not mistaken. Even in the very first Need for Speed, it was the VT version from 92 with the uh, four-wheel drive. And apart from that, it has never ever really be, been featured in any game, officially at least, through mods, etc., but never officially. And I'm still waiting on the day when a new PGR or Forza or GT, Gran Turismo, releases with this very model. I would give everything to drive it just virtually. I mean, I don't know, it's just my favorite car. So look at the backside of it. Two meters and two centimeters wide. One of the widest cars, <laughs> widest bags of any car. And it just looks so cool. This is the VT 6.0 version, which has also been featured in some Forzas and in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 on the PlayStation 2. Yeah, super car. And then the fastest street legal Diablo ever built, the GT. Very cool looking, very mean looking, very quick, less than the top end top speed wise but an acceleration and around the track roughly as quick as in the 50 well i mean considering this one did release in what 2000 and the f50 95 five years earlier lamborghini needed several several <laughs> several <laughs> revisions of the diablo to beat the f50 not not a good look for for lamborghini but you know they were never known for truly spectacular 
track performance, but more so in power and top speed and acceleration. So, yeah, they did it finally with the Diablo GT. Although that, yeah, is debatable. At the latest, they did it with the Murcielago. So, yeah, that's that. And here in this corner is just, again, the Diablo GT in the orange color. Why did I do this? Because exactly as you see it here, I have seen it in the Wolfsburger Autostadt um, as well, just as the VW W12 Nardo concept car. This was also there in the museum and in, in, um, in person, in real life, it just looks absolutely amazing. And in the yellow car color, actually, it was standing in the Lamborghini Museum in Sant'Agata in Italy, which where I have al um, also been, or been as well once, in the summer uh, of 2019. And, well, yeah, I have actually seen them in real life as they are here and here, like this in in Wolfsburg, Autostadt Wolfsburg, um, Lower Saxony in Germany, and this one in Sant'Agata in Italy, in the Museum of Lamborghini. So yeah, these are, this is my favorite automaker and my uh, the favorite cars in the game for me, basically. I believe you could go up here, let's take a look. How does that look when we're up here? Yeah, some coastline. Quite cool. Can we go in? Ah, oh, we can't go outside here, which sucks. Uh, I don't want to play, but we can take a look from here. Yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, let's check out the last garage, which is the Hinterhof von Tokyo, basically a backyard of Tokyo or in Tokyo. And as I already Revealed is the, la the last cars of the game, 10 Ferraris for the 10 parking lots in the last garage. And yeah, let's take a look at those. Let's just take a straight look from, from here. Because from here we can see all 10 of them. Yeah, what a sight, huh? Wouldn't it be nice to have this garage in real life, huh? <laughs> so, um, let's go to the first, to my least favorite Ferrari from this game, which would be the 288 GTO Evo. Is this the race version of the 40? No, it isn't. I'm not sure, but it shouldn't be. Um, why the least favorite? Well, it is, of course, incredibly impressive on a track, but, uh, well, it looks, again, like some relatively ugly race car it's basically is a race car and it's in my opinion is one of the ugliest Ferraris ever made probably and yeah, still a great car though then we have the F50 GT looks in my opinion very good especially for a track focused car but again it's a little too racy for me on the track though it is absolutely unbelievable like it's so class leading, it's it's so over the top, it's so dominant, it's just an incredible, incredible car, really. Just wow, very cool. Then what would be the next one? I'm just going by, you know, by my emotions, which I just like the most. It there is nostalgia involved, how much I like the design the sound, the history of the car, etc. Guess it's the Testarossa. For an 80s car, looks very good, except this funky, only on one side mirror thing, which I think looks pretty weird. But other than that, it's a very beautiful car. Of course, pretty impressive for back then, although it had slightly disappointing acceleration. But yeah, nonetheless, very iconic, legendary Ferrari. Uh, pretty good, yeah, pretty great. So, the next one for me, I would say that these three cars, they are like in the ranking more or less the same for me, but we should start with the 360. If I had to decide, this would be my least favorite of those three. Still one of my favorite Ferraris, looks pretty cool, the standard 360. 
you know, or the Cabriolet version is just so cool. It sounds amazing. 400 HP, rear wheel drive. It is in this very, for me, very comfortable range of sports cars and supercars between 300 and 500 HP. This is, in my opinion, like the ideal range. It's pretty quick, but that not that it would um, intimidate you too much, you know, uh, and wouldn't bore you. Um, yeah, it has. It is basically exactly in the middle of it. It looks good. It sounds great. It drives great. Um, super car, you know. Um, pretty underappreciated, I think, or I, I feel. Then we have the 355 F1 GTS. Definitely one of my favorite Ferraris design-wise. Again, it's in this range of power. 355 HP, as the name suggests. Um, back then, the favorite car of Jeremy Clarkson, the guy from Top Gear, the main host. And yeah, I think it looks stunning. I have seen it even in my hometown of Hanover in Germany quite a few times. And in other places, in other countries, it's a relatively um, widely widely uh, available and, well, yeah, widely, widely avail available um, Ferrari car. Not that expensive um, as well, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, even today, if you buy it used, obviously. Um, but yeah, it looks great, it just uh, drives great, it sounds great, like, you know, the typical Ferrari. And for back then, when it released in 94, I believe, it was very, very impressive. So yeah, just a supercar. Then we have the F430. Mm, I should place it probably higher on my list from these 10 cars, but yeah, let's just continue here. It is probably one of my absolute favorite Ferraris. I, li I don't know why, I, I know that many many Ferrari fans and non-Ferrari fans don't really like its design that much. I can see why, but I don't know, it kind of speaks to me. I really like how it looks. It has 500 HP, rear-wheel drive, of course, V V8 probably it should be. And it sounds phenomenal and, you know, everything, the combination of its weight, rear-wheel drive, um, engine... The sound and the power that it produces of 500 HP is just, to me, very close to the perfect sports slash supercar ever. It just is absolutely amazing on the track. It's super fun. It's engaging. It sounds great. It looks great. It's very quick, but not really where it gets, again, intimidating and definitely not slow, not even a little bit slower than anything. I mean, it, it does produce a lot of acceleration with 500 HP. It can go over 300 kmh, like 310, 315, roughly 315 top speed, which is, well, more than enough, even on the racetrack uh, for such a car. And, well, yeah, this is... One of the best supercars ever built, in my opinion. Just phenomenal. So, let's continue with... With... I guess with the Enzo. Although those three, you know... The... The highlights, you know, the... The truth trifecta, the holy trinity. The F40, F50 and, unofficially, I believe, F60, the Enzo. Named after its famous founder, um, Ferrari Enzo, um, and co-developed with Mi Michael Schumacher, Michael Schumacher, back then, which shows um, it does have a ten tendency to understeer, um, which I believe is true. There have been many statements from racing drivers and owners, etc. But I do actually believe if you drive it well, if you drive it right, then it is unbelievably capable and it is just insanely quick in a straight line it's this car came out in 2002 and there was nothing even remotely comparable to it nothing the first car that could truly be on the track that came after this one i mean i don't know it would be maybe i'm just really not sure maybe something like the Murcielago LP640, although that's debatable. Or, you know, maybe even something quicker. 
um, so it, it held this record probably around the track and in the straight line for for a long time uh, i don't know even if the mclaren f1 was really quicker i'm not talking talking top end i know it was quicker in the top end but in acceleration v12 engine uh, sound pretty well crazy you know v12 engine um, over 360 or at least over 350 kmh top end which is very very impressive like well, less than 30 kilometers away from the legendary f1 with its mclaren f1 with its 386 kmh so yeah for 2002 this car was just unbelievable so good then I will place probably the, probably the F50. Um, I like the coupe version more. Um, I think it is a very underrated car design-wise. Many Ferraris hate it. They say it's ugly. I don't know why. Look at these lines. You know, it's almost sensual. It's just it's just super sexy. What a beautiful car. I absolutely love how it looks, but again, there's a lot of nostalgia involved with, with my childhood. Need for Speed 2 had this car, Need for Speed 4 um, on the PS1 had this car, and was like a highlight car, you know, next to Mac the McLaren F1 and Lamborghini Diablo. But yeah, I think still, uh, all in all, quite underrated. Yes, it is a little bit slower than its predecessor, the F40 around the track. Uh, because it's quite a bit heavier but yeah it has basically an f1 engine which was also a v12 engine what does it have roughly 520 hp 325 top end um, yeah still super impressive and i think very very good looking although it's not the best model of the car in any game it's a really really good model for a 2005 game but it is much better represented and well the new forces and the Gran Turismo Sport I have seen this and almost every other Ferrari here that you can see in uh, the two museums in Italy, in Maranello and to the other town I forget the name of all the time. Uh, I have even a video on that on my channel where I drive uh, the Formula One simulator of Ferrari in the, their museum. So if you want to check that out, you can do so. And here is my second favorite car of this game, Ferrari. Second favorite Ferrari of this game, the F40. Really not a good model of this car. They, I mean, again, it's far from bad. It's, of course, very well done. But especially the model in Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, 5, 6 and Sport. They are the best models in any game, I think. And there it just looks quite a bit better. Just much more detailed and just, uh, well close closer to real life still a very very good looking car and for 88 it was just unbelievable it really basically is a race car for for the road it's very light very powerful roughly 380 um horsepower real drive of course and i mean just compare this car on the track to the lamborghini countach 25th anniversary from uh, a few minutes ago it's just no competition it's completely two different you know speed classes the F40 was just unbeatable what was the first car that could actually street legal car that could beat the F40 certainly it wasn't the F50 um, I don't know maybe something like again yeah no, no Diablo model could do it probably not even the standard Murcielago just the Murcielago, Murcielago SV or LP640 could do it uh, maybe um, imagine that you know just, this is a car from 88 unbelievable yeah an absolute legend looks great sounds in real life just bonkers completely insane just, uh, the f50 as well by the way yeah, it sounds pretty pretty nice and well yeah it's the legend the last car built under the rain under the rain of mm, well um, the legend himself ferrari enzo or Enzo Ferrari, sorry. Um, so, yeah, it shows. An absolute legend. And the last car, and I'm sure you're surprised why this should be my favorite one. M most of you have probably expected this to be my least favorite model. I don't know why. This car spoke to me always so much. 
again, probably a lot of nostalgia involved from Need for Speed 4 on the PlayStation 1, where there was the 550 Maranello. But, um, yeah, this is the 575. Uh, the improved version. I don't know why, but I love its design. I like how it how it sounds. I love the fr front engine, rear wheel drive layout. I love how it makes the car feel, how it drives, how drifty, slidey, and still very controllable it is. You know, um, it's it, it's got what. Yeah, just as the name suggests, probably 575 HP, which is out of a little bit out of my ideal range, range from 300 to 500 HP, where these models are all in there. But it doesn't really f feel that quick, which which isn't a bad thing because, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. This car just feels right. This gt-ish character of it it's supposed or alleged um, direct competitor is the aston martin Van vanquish s which i guess is um, a good look for the aston martin but less so for the ferrari and um, quite honestly i don't think that the aston martin vanquish is can really hold a candle against the 575 Maranello. The 575 is just quite a bit quicker around the track and just feels better. It still has less weight. You know, it's it's a Ferrari. And, well, again, I don't know why, but, yeah, definitely my favorite car, uh, favorite Ferrari from these 10 and one of my favorite Ferraris of all time. And I pray that it may make finally come to gt gt7 then i hope it does yeah let's take a last look at these 10 cars and i guess yeah this would be it for this video i hope you did enjoy my very important ramblings about all of these cars um, and did enjoy the beautiful scenery in this game which they have done a really good job of i think for again especially for a game from 2005 good shaders on the cars very good models um, just cool looking and yeah just super beautiful cars i hope again i hope you you enjoyed the video and if you did consider leaving a like you know a sub all that jazz and yeah we are we'll or i'll see you in the next one bye bye